Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm basically a wildlife painter, though I have had commissions for people, pets, sporting dogs, and that sort of thing, but wildlife makes up the bulk of what I'm about. I just returned from a trip west where I gathered some photo research uh, in anticipation of finding something that's you know, truly exciting to paint. This is something that I started a day ago and it is essentially an event that caused me great excitement at sunrise when the first light started hitting these bison. Um, I went, wow, that is, that's something I'd like to, to share with other people and that's what my wildlife paintings are about. It's giving folks who don't necessarily have the opportunity to be out and about and viewing wildlife a chance to really see the beauty that nature provides. I do a lot of background work on the computer and I'll take an image, let's say this here was something that really excited me, that lighting and the bison, an arrangement that was kind of interesting to view and the foreground rock and so on, but as a painting it lacked more emotional elements. So on the computer I played around with different additional levels of background and there's an image here that shows a couple different early sunrise vistas and so I decided to incorporate that as part of the composition. I play with the elements and I go back and forth changing the lighting in uh, subtle ways of adding more contrast or more warmth or whatever I think it needs and when you bring elements in that aren't part of the original image you have to make sure that they they also have the same light temperature so it may result in my having to lighten or darken let's say this bull add warmth to it and in some ways the, the computer has now become my real creative tool and the real joy because things happen so quickly as compared to years ago when I used to do this all with pencil and, and paper and, and lay things out that way. It's a very time consuming process. Essentially I start out by drawing and there was underdrawing on all of this to put the, um, the individual bison in where the horizon line is, components like this that I thought are a nice color addition and I first like to block in those areas so that again my composition is being satisfied in my mind that okay these percentages of, of space are, are comfortable to me and then I go ahead with adding all of the individual textures and color changes and so on. If I wanted to add something here and show the grasses with the brush strokes, I could go in and be very tediously trying to replicate the grasses that I'm seeing on this prairie. Or I could come in and I go, wow, you know, I put in that as a backdrop and I go, well, that's a little bit, a little bit too cool. I'll add some warming elements to it. And it, it, it allows me to be, I guess it's just it's almost like scribbling, but it's the underlaying area that gives me the basis, the building blocks for future parts of this painting. Also, I can introduce colors that are exciting to me as an artist that cumulatively, when they're viewed from a distance, will become grass. But, but it contains many different colors to get to that, as opposed to just mixing up a color that goes, well, I gotta get exactly this green, gray, purplish look I can just pull this stuff in from all over the place with this kind of a brush and, and I don't worry too much about it because later I can come back in and I will go, come over the top with layers and layers and that's one nice thing about acrylic. It's, it's like a layering of, of transparent washes but this is really the fun part because it's so free and it allows you to, to play with color I've said time and again that the best way to get the enthusiasm and the excitement to create a painting is because it happened 
in front of you while you were in that nat just natural situation uh, in nature. And that's, that's the ultimate creator for my work as a painter. Well, I've been always, I guess, uh, an artist, just never fully understanding what that meant. As I matured through the school years, I always liked drawing and painting, though I didn't do that much of it. But I liked the out of doors and the natural world. I would go to the woods after school when some kids would go to the ballpark. And I loved to be down by the creek. And it took many years for all of that to really come to a realization that, you know, there must be something here that I can use to create a living. I realized that I needed to go to have further schooling. So I went to the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And knowing that ultimately I had to go into the real world and make a living, I thought, well, what, what can I do? And it was made easy for me by a scout coming to the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And he was recruiting artists for the greeting card business. And though some artists felt that that was beneath them to pursue that, I had a wife and two children and I needed a paycheck. And so I was moved to Kansas City. I became one of the creative people in the art department uh, generating the greeting cards. It was probably my most important learning process in my whole life in that I met and worked with some of the absolutely finest artists in the country. I learned more about painting in my time at Hallmark than I did in, in art school. But art school in reality was sort of a clearing ground. It, it sort of erased what you thought you knew about art and gave you a new foundation to build on. And that foundation was built on extremely well at Hallmark. I took what I knew from there to northern Minnesota where I started working with a small printing company doing graphic arts. My painting efforts were really put on the back burner for many years and I finally said if I'm going to be an artist in the fine arts and paint I need to do something that makes it easy for me to do painting anytime I am up to it. So I set up an area in the basement and had a palette with everything ready, being able to put a cover on it so that any time I wanted to come down and paint, even if it was for 10 minutes, I could take the cover off and start painting on something that I thought was worthwhile. And that's what I did. And finally, 10 years after Hallmark, I started painting. And of course, the subject matter was naturally wildlife and the natural world. I had early, very successful sales of the limited edition prints. and started doing shows in the Twin Cities and from there was noticed by some publishers and those publishers eventually came down to one publisher, Wild Wings, who invited me to an original show and I brought uh, one of my wild turkey paintings and it received a lot of acclaim and because of the process of the art world. It took some time. It was nearly nine months later before that painting actually was printed in limited edition. And that limited edition print sold out in about six weeks and much to the excitement of, of my publisher. And they said, um, you got any more paintings? <laughs> and so that was the beginning of a relationship that's been over 20 years. And um, we've moved from one subject whitetail, wild turkey, loons, and so on, each time kind of testing the waters whether there was a market for my paintings in, with that subject matter. And fortunately, it had, it had been successful you know, time and again to the point where I feel very comfortable with my publisher and my publisher is very comfortable with me. And as long as I have the mind, hand, and eye coordination, I will hopefully continue to paint because it's a, it's a very satisfying kind of thing to do. Success, I think, in, in anything, any endeavor, is hinged on the basic component that you love what you do, and I certainly love what I do as an artist. 
So I think from that standpoint alone, being able to make a living doing what you like to do is, is success. I've been blessed to have been able to ride that train and we'll continue doing it. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.